Hey, what the gambling industry doesn't want you to know. Gambling is used extensively all over the world to launder money. If I was to estimate based on the amount of accounts I've seen of that nature, it would have to be millions and millions of dollars that is laundered every year. It's just a scam. The fact that nobody can win, we only want losing customers. That's it. It was just fucked. And they know what advertising works, what algorithm works. They know how to maximize their profit, which is to get people to lose more and more. It is just rotten to the core. Get it fucking twisted, bro. You will win. You will build your life. Gamble. Always gamble. 90% of gamblers... 90% of gamblers quit right before they make it big. Everybody knows that. <laughs> I was a customer account supervisor at one of the biggest gambling companies in the world. With 21st century technology, the punter doesn't really know what's going on. And behind the scenes, there's all of this maths going on that analyzes your betting and ensures the company wins. It will always win. Customers would be categorized based on their profitability. So if a customer lost millions of dollars, they would be labeled a VIP and only the best staff would talk to them. But if you were a problem customer, that meant that you were winning money. So you'd be labeled with a big badge that said that you're a problem and that needs to be dealt with. So not trained. The risk rating is done by an algorithm. It's just how much they've lost against whatever other metrics the company's decided. The risk rating essentially turns off winners and stops them from betting. And I love when people say, never happened to me. Yeah, bro, because you didn't win enough, okay? Yeah, of course it never happened to you. Sports betting is actually extra fuck because if you're good and win, they limit your bets to like nothing. So you can't actually win anything substantial after you win enough? Wait, really? What the fuck? No shot. What? I doubt it. I fucking doubt it. No way, because everybody... Look. What's the, what's the fucking... What's the take? It's like... Um, Gambling is the only place where you can quickly make a thousand percent of your uh, money, but it's also infinitely more likely that you will lose 100% of the money that you already had. A friend of mine can't bet on football matches anymore because he was too right. If you win too much on sports betting, they just ban your account. Wait, what? Never happened to me. By the way, I really need 5K to pay my taxes. Please, brother, please. I'm begging. Why bookmakers close their limit accounts? From time to time, bookmakers will decide to limit a customer's account. That's crazy. When an account becomes limited, it means that the amount that they can wager is restricted. Often bookmakers will limit accounts that are winning too much or are suspected of doing something else that's against the rules. What? My draft my DraftKings account is up minus 300 from 50 so this is fake news. <laughs> Bro. I didn't know this. 
I knew this about casinos. And oftentimes part of the reason why they do it is like, they, they'll say like they suspect you of card counting, which by the way, why is that cheating? I, I, that's, I, I think it's so fucking stupid. It's literally not illegal. It just means you're too good at fucking playing blackjack. Which is insane. Like, casinos have decided it's cheating if you're good at the game. Like, the way to win the game is quite literally to be able to count cards. It means, like, you're so good. You're too good. And the casinos are like, nah, dog. So they limit how much you can win, but I see no limit on how much you can lose. As a matter of fact, if you lose all your money, they help you get more. They'll give you a line. The house will also, you know, tack on a loan on top of that for you. They let you sink harder, but they never let you win. So weird. And sports betting is beatable, a key distinction from slots. They know that, so they have to. The dude in the video is Australian, and here is why. Holy fuck. Bro, I didn't know Trainwrecks was Australian. That's crazy. Like... <laughs> <sighs> the funniest take I've seen from the Twitch gambling ban law. These streams have helped facilitate one of the facilitate one of the largest core to periphery wealth transfers in the world. Think how many America KKK on fortunes. These sites drain how many lives in the global north they ruin, how many fortunes they made in Serbia. <laughs> Truly shameful decision from Twitch. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, this is a joke, guys. Cryptocurrency is third world praxis. Much of the modern day-to-day -day churn is just coder guys from India ripping off Reddit American biz discord telegram hype beasts. That's a good take. Cranks up the dial for anybody that's losing so they can lose more and more and more money. It's actually a design feature to ensure that those that lose are allowed to lose more. So if a customer says something that could indicate they've got a problem with gambling, you would just have to go through a series of questions and just tick, 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 and that was it. Suicide calls were to be dealt with by only a senior manager, but I had a manager tell me that they just had to make a decision based on the threat and stick to it, and that it didn't matter once they hung up the phone because they didn't know whether or not they followed through with their threat or not, so that it didn't really matter. So that's probably still the worst thing I've ever heard anybody say. Because you don't know whether or not they killed themselves or not, it didn't matter. It's a, an industry known thing. Gambling is used extensively all over the world to launder money. But a company would treat customers different depending on what country they were from. If there was a whole heap of customers in England sign up, with similar details, that would be a suspected syndicate of people trying to get one up on the company. I raised things of a similar nature in countries in South America, and all of those accounts were waved through, and that happened multiple times. When you get 20 individuals join up within a space... Yeah, this guy's doing bad faith, dude. I bet... I bet 
uh, he wouldn't react adequately to, you know, random tweets. I can just tell. I know he's wearing a mask to, you know, hide that he's being bad faith and dismissive. Okay. But you think you can fool me, dude? You think you can fool me with your mask and your fucking voice modulator and your fake accent? Nobody has an accent like that. Typical virtue signaling, bad faith, nonchalance, Andy. It's a 20 minutes or with matching email addresses and account numbers. It's quite obvious that's a systemic tactic to launder money. If I was to estimate based on the amount of accounts I've seen of that nature, it would have to be millions and millions of dollars that are laundered every year. And that's just that company alone. When you realize that the company doesn't care about people, it makes you feel appalled and sort of disgusted within yourself because you know that you're helping a company harm people and virtually deliberately harm people because the culture is that it's all about revenue. It ruins people's lives, it takes their money, it ruins their families, the staff either indoctrinated or miserable, and then- No company does, bro? Yes, but like, you can look at like, I don't know, dude, look at like fucking dairy farmers or some shit. Yeah, there's still evil parts of their practice, there, as is in every fucking industry. But ultimately, you're just drinking milk, okay? Vegans, don't chime in, please. This is a conversation for the carnists only. Please, 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 please. Okay? Like, you're just drinking milk at the end of the day. Okay? Please, before you fucking pop off, vegans. I'm so sorry. You're right. You're morally righteous. Uh, please. But you know what I'm saying? Whereas, like, this industry is specifically designed as a vice. Like a very destructive vice. Every aspect of it is like... I don't know. Every aspect of it is like heightened too. I think the closest anal uh, analogy is like... Not even alcohol, but cigarettes. Alcohol is a close... Alcohol is a close example too, but cigarettes I think are even a closer example because like... It's already an addictive substance, right? Tobacco in and of itself. But then they make it worse... You slander vegans one more time and I'll send the Beyond Meat COO to bite your nose. Beyond Meat suspends executive after he was arrested on suspicion of biting a man's nose? What? Least feral vegan, bro. What the fuck? I like that they suspended him. Like, only. Like, Beyond Meat... Like what? So the other, the rest of the board was like, hold on, let's hear him out. The guy's nose that he bit, did he consent? Number one, because there is such a thing as ethical cannibalism, okay? And two, was the guy talking about how cool it is to eat meat? Holy fuck, he's in Arkansas. He punched through the back of the windshield of a Subaru that hit the tire of his Bronco. The incident took place in a parking garage near Razorback Stadium at University of Arkansas. The driver of the Subaru told the police that Ramsey pulled him in close and started punching his body. Ramsey also bit the driver, ripping the flesh on the tip of his nose. Oh, he's not a fucking vegan, bro. Look at this guy. He literally... Worked at Tyson Foods before Beyond Meat. <laughs> yeah, no, this guy's definitely a meat eater. Did he bite with the intent to chew?
Now in Las Vegas. What? How this device won illegally 44 million from Las Vegas? Okay. And Finish this and then we'll watch it. All, it's changed what sport is. If you're about to get into Ponting, make very underwhelming coverage of the Iran situation, Azan, Saj. They are currently killing thousands of shut down the internet. Brother, I hope you understand, and, and I mean this with all respect, okay? When things like this are happening in places like Iran, okay, and it's only Twitter information that I can parse together. There is a lot of terms of service violations, okay? I can't be live watching uh, information for on the ground. Half the time, it's not even verified shit, okay? And I can't do that. I know you're going to probably say, look, you didn't react hard enough. One, you're probably going to say, I didn't like it. You were, you were dismissive or something, okay? I know, we, we got a lot of that. We got a lot of that, okay? I did my neutral face when I was covering it. And I do this every time breaking news happens. And the other day was no different, by the way. I'm sorry. What do we want? What do they want you to say? They really want you to come out and say some Islamophobic shit? I mean, I think I did really, really good coverage on it. I did talk about it already. No mistake about it. You can't win. None of these companies will allow you to win in the long run. So just don't bother.